Hey there everybody, welcome back to Zethnos Gaming, I am Zethnos, and today we are going to be talking about Necromancers. So this build is going to be more of a bunker build, where you just kind of like hold the point and soak up damage, so you're just going to be the tank. And you are using minions, the drawback to using this is that you are minion reliant, which means if they kill all of your minions, um, all at the same time, and you have quite a while for the cooldown to reset, you are going to be in trouble unless your shroud will last you until you can pop them back out. So, with that being the biggest drawback, uh, there are definitely better bunker builds for the Necromancer, but this is without using the Reaper or anything like that, so anybody can use this build. I've personally used it. There is a, another video on the channel of me actually using this build in some PvP. So if you want to check that video out, I'll leave a link in the description. So let's get into the build. Alright, so your weapons are going to be your staff and your scepter warhorn. Staff is mainly for your crowd control, which because your 5 you know does your fear and your 3 does your chill, plus it gives you some range which is also really good. Your number two is going to do healing and bleeding, which the healing is what you really want for your minions to keep your minions alive. We're not really worried about doing damage or causing conditions or anything like that, so that's not really going to be a huge factor. All right, so now the reasons I've chose these minions and this signet is because I really don't like the other two minion options for this build, like the bone minions. They don't last very long in combat, and you you really want to ha to make the most out out of out of your combat and the the flesh worm is kind of weird like you can only place it in a stationary position which is going to be i mean you know it's not bad if you're just holding down one area but if you're going to be moving around going to multiple areas like after you lock down a point move to another point which is what i do a lot then you're going to want mobile minions also the flesh worm uh you can't place it anywhere that isn't like easily accessible like if you can't just walk to that point you can't place it so that's also another reason why I don't really care for it unless you are actually going to be placing it on the point with you which I don't really like that because it can get targeted and hit with AoE effects and things like that if it's near you all the time that's where these other minions are directly on top of your opponent. So if you're at range, like with your staff or with the scepter, because the scepter does have a little bit of range, then, you know, the minions are going to be on them and not on you. So they're not going to kill them unless they are on top of you with your minions there with them and they're doing AoE damage or if they specifically target your minions. Now, the Blood Fiend is your healing skill. It heals you uh, passively. It also will siphon health with this build and send it to you so it's going to be healing you for a whole lot more than what it normally would and then you can also kill the minion to heal you if you need a huge boost now your bone fiend does crippling and when you activate it it'll do uh, immobilize which is good you want to do cc try to keep them off of you and then also it will siphon health as well your shadow fiend when you activate it does blinding and it also gives you life force which is awesome and it'll do siphoning as well same thing, you know, with your flesh golem, it'll do the siphoning and all that. But it's, uh, it's, you know, it's regular attacks do crippling all the time. So your opponent will always be crippled with him, and then this will also do extra crippling. So you know, they're not going to be able to get around really quickly unless they can constantly remove the crippling. And then also, is uh, your flesh golem's activated ability is to bull rush them pretty much. So you just knock them over, and they will be prone unless they have stability and, and things like that. Now the reason I chose this signet is because it gives you extra movement speed which you definitely want the movement speed in battle because it will help you get from point to point quicker to lock it down, hold it, and keep it there and it's just definitely what you need. Plus it also acts as a secondary healing skill because when you press it as you can see there it gives you a nice boost of health. Now with that being said we're going to move on to our specializations. First is soul reaping it, you, this gives you like a bunch of life force and, and things like that. Like This is going to be focus on your death shroud a whole lot as well as your minions. So, you know, your first you got your increased life force uh, gained from skills. Then you also have your increased movement speed while in shroud and reduces the recharge, which is awesome. Then you, you gain spectral armor when your health drops below 50%. 
which is great because you get protection and you gain life force. And then next, your life force drains slower while in shroud. Shroud skills recharge faster, so now you're able to use your skills a whole lot more often, and your shroud lasts a whole lot longer. Do more damage while above the life force threshold. You know, that's kind of, you know, what it just gives you. I mean, it is nice to do a little bit more damage. That way you're not just a tank, that you're doing some damage. But we're not really too concerned with the damage right now. Also, you gain stability and break stuns when you enter Shroud, which is awesome. So if you're like immobilized, just pop into Shroud, turn it on, turn it off, and you know, there you go. You're no longer uh, stun immobilized or whatever. Or, you, you know, you can turn it on, leave it on, and then, you know, you have stability for a little while and you're still in Shroud, so you have that second health bar if you really need it. Okay, next is going to be Blood Magic. This is where we're going to get a lot of our health siphoning from. So, leave a mark of blood whenever you dodge. So that's basically your second skill on the staff. It does bleeding and health regen. So if you dodge and an opponent is right next to you, or if you dodge, you know, right next to them or whatever, they'll activate this mark, heal you, heal your minions, and deal bleeding to them. And anyone else in the area as well. So next, you have Create Lesser Signet of Vampirism on your foe when you inflict bleeding on them that matches or exceeds the threshold. The threshold here being four stacks. That's going to be extremely easy for you to do with this build. Because here, let me look at this. See, you gain two stacks of bleeding with your number two skill on your staff, which your staff is not really going to be what causes your bleeding, because you're just going to use this. Like, you're going to place down your marks, use them up, and then immediately switch to your uh, scepter, which is the whole main goal here. Is like you use this for your crowd control and things like that. You know, place these down real quick, let them pop, switch to your scepter, and then you're doing all kinds of crazy bleeding with your scepter. See, uh, your basic here, your basic uh, spammable attack does three stacks of bleeding instantly, and it, it's a really fast attack. So you're going to get that four stacks really quickly. Also, your second skill does crippling and bleeding. You get another crowd control and you do more bleeding. This does torment and gives you life force. You know, and then you can daze foes and then, you know, your cripple and swiftness and all that. But with these two skills right here, you're going to be doing quite a lot of bleeding. Next, you're going to siphon health whenever you hit a foe and your myth minion siphon health and give it to you. So every time you hit a foe with a basic attack or a skill or anything, you're going to siphon health. And this right here tells you the numbers of the siphon health damage and things like that and for your minions see it shows you here your minions are going to be healing you every time that they hit which is awesome uh, because uh, some of your minions attack very quickly like your flesh golem has a pretty fast basic attack and plus since you're rocking four minions that you know you're going to be getting healed for quite a lot you and your nearby allies siphon health with attacks okay so that also counts for your minions. They will siphon health and heal themselves. So they're doing extra uh, siphon damage, plus they're healing themselves as well, which goes along with this. So like this health doesn't get transferred to you, but it's keeping your minions alive longer. So they will be able to stay up and not really be taken down as easily, which is awesome. Plus other people on your team will also be able to use this as well if you're not already at your max number of people using it. Allies near you do not bleed out while downed, gain healing power based on your current health. So the more damage you take, the more healing that you do, which is awesome because when you're below half your health, you gain a huge boost to your healing power, which means all of this siphoning and everything boost, your siphoning from minions boost, and you gain a lot of extra sustainability once you get below half of your, uh, your health. And see, when you get below half, I mean, you still have another half to go, but you're also healing yourself for a whole lot more than what you were, plus you still have your Death Shroud. Next, you're going to draw conditions from allies when you enter Shroud and every few seconds while you remain in Shroud. Gain life force for each time a condition is drawn. So, while you're in Shroud, you're drawing conditions from allies, which is going to be great because that means that you're taking damage away from your minions, from enemy, from you know people on your team and everything. So you're doing a really good job there because you're soaking up all of that damage, but it also gives you life force. So it's giving you sustainability while you're also in Shroud. So you're going to you be able to stay in Shroud longer and you're helping your team, which is amazing. That's definitely something that we want to do. So next is death magic. This is where your minions come in. 
this is going to help your minions a whole lot, especially, you know, giving them the siphoning ability with the last skill tree. You gain toughness while you're in shroud, so that makes you even tankier once you hit that shroud if you need, uh, you know, some extra life or if you're about to die or whatever. So you pop that, you have, you know, your second health bar from your shroud pretty much, plus you're harder to, harder to hit. And then also with your other abilities, you know, you gain a lot of sustainability. Next, minions have increased health, gain bonus toughness for each minion you control. So that's even more toughness for all four of those minions that you're controlling. Now, I know some people would say, oh, well, what about bone minions? You know, you could just summon those and gain even more toughness. Well, you really only get two more toughness if you replace your signet with that or, you know, two more bumps of this toughness, which is just an extra 40 toughness. Or, you know, if you replace one of your minions with it, that's an only extra, you know, plus 20 toughness. It's not really a huge amount. It definitely helps, but the, this also increases the health of your minions, which is pretty much what we want out of this. I mean, yes, it is nice to get the, the toughness, but if we increase the health of the minions, then that you know, makes them more survivable so you're not having to worry about having to refresh your minions all the time. Next, your passive life force generation from nearby deaths is increased. So anytime anything dies, whether it be a minion or an enemy or another allied player, you gain more life force. So anytime anything dies, you get a little bit of a bump to your second health bar. Minions deal more damage and take conditions from you whenever a minion attacks, it transfers conditions to your target. Okay, so now here's the thing. This plays in with your draw conditions up here very well. So anytime you draw a condition, it gives you life force, right? And then also your minions are drawing conditions from you. So you're taking conditions from them and from your allies, giving you life force, and then your minions are taking it from you and applying it <laughs> right back to the enemy. So that's awesome. You're gaining life force for something that the, you know, the enemy's trying to kill you with, and then you're in turn also killing them with it, which is awesome. When you leave Shroud, you and your minions gain protection. So every time you leave your, your Shroud form, you gain you know, more sustainability. So, if your shroud ends early and you're still at like at half health or a little bit lower, you know, this is a big help because it'll be able to make you last a little bit longer to gain that extra healing or to wait until you can resummon your minions or whatever it is that you need to do. Regenerate health while you're in shroud. If your life force is above the threshold, your threshold will activate or your shroud will activate when you take a lethal blow. So pretty much when your health drops to zero, you automatically go into shroud um, if you have 10%, which is awesome. You don't have to worry about jumping into shroud yourself to try to save yourself. It happens automatically. Now, something you have to get used to when doing this is you have to actually rely on it to pop itself because there have been times where I'm like, oh crap, I'm getting low health, and I'll go to like hit my shroud and it will take me out of shroud. Like, it'll put me in shroud and instantly take me out because the automatic feature. So you have to be very careful that you have to rely on it to be able to do its job. So now with that, let's go over to the armor and things like that. So now your weapon stats here. You want sigil of water on your staff and sigil of transference. You're going to do this on both of them. So pretty much you have a 30% chance on hit to heal nearby allies around your target, i.e. your minions. So it's you're healing your minions even more, you're giving them more sustainability, and then also your outgoing healing effectiveness increases by 10%. That includes your 30% chance on hit to heal nearby allies, and that also includes everything right here in your blood magic that does siphoning, like anything that you let them do siphoning it'll increase their siphoning a little bit. From my understanding, someone may be able, you know, if, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but from my understanding, it will also increase the siphoning that you give to others. So you want that on your uh, scepter and warhorn as well. That way, you know, you're doing the same thing because your scepter you'll be able to hit faster with, so you're actually going to have, you know, even more healing going out towards your minions. And now this is in a radius around your target. So if you're like at maximum range with your staff and your minions are all at your opponent and you're hitting them, you're still healing your, your minions. So next, for your runes, we're going to be doing runes of the Daliac to give you toughness, vitality, and regenerate health every second. 
which is very nice. And then you want the Cleric Amulet, because it gives you power, toughness, and healing power. We don't really care about the power that much. It, you know, Again, it is nice to have some power, that way you're not just a meat shield that does no damage. So that is nice to have, but we're more concerned with the healing power and toughness. The reason you want the healing power is because it will increase your siphoning, your minion siphoning, your health transfer, and you know, it just... It's something you really, really need because without this, you your healing won't be able to stay, sustain you as well as it should. And then it also gives you, of course, the increased toughness. So here's your final stats here. There you go. There's the build. I'm going to be doing a couple of more builds for some different professions. I'm going to be doing a Reaper build as well. So I hope you guys stay tuned for that. And here you go. I will put the link to the build in the description. Have a nice day.